Hi, in the next five to 10 minutes, I want to talk about standardizing SLOs as code. And I want to show you how we do it with our open source project, Captain. I'm Andy Grabner. I do work for Dynatrace. My Twitter handle is at Grabner Andy. But what I really am passionate about is the open source project, Captain. You can find it at, at Captain Project or go to captain.sh and go from there. But let's jump into the topic. We only have about five to 10 minutes. So I want to get started with why I think we need a standard and then our approach from a captain side to SLO as code. And hopefully you can join the conversation and truly get us there. But let me get started. Why I think we need a standard. And maybe you disagree with me, but here are my points. Now, over the last couple of years, I have seen and worked with many different tools or vendors of custom implementations, vendors in the open source space that are saying, hey, here are the way we think SLO should work. And they're all great. By the way, this list is by far not complete. I just put those logos on there that I am a little bit familiar with. So sorry if I missed your favorite tool, feel free to add it to the list and maybe also counter my argument why we need uh, a standard. Now let's go into some examples. Pivotal's indicator protocol, one of the first ones I've seen Great approach, YAML file, you specify your indicators where in one file you have your SLI with a tool specific query and your fixed threshold. So the thing here, all great, but it's all together in one file and very tool specific. Noble9, <clears throat> great tool. We know our friends who are organizing their conference here. Similar approach, YAML file, you specify your tool specific query, in this case, Prometheus, and then you have your fixed thresholds and then they beautifully translate into the visualizations we know and the alerting, especially for production monitoring usage or for your canary deployments. Now, switching or shifting a little bit left, I've also worked with people like T-Systems who created a Jenkins plugin for automated performance analysis. Their approach is similar. You specify a tool-specific query, like in this case, Dynatrace, fixed thresholds, and they will then be analyzed as part of a performance test analysis. Another interesting thing, and this actually came even before, I think this was my first exposure and heavily also inspired uh, what we're doing with Captain, is the performance signature approach by Thomas Steinmauer. He is a performance engineer and they do continuous performance analysis and they have what they call a performance signature. But essentially what it is, if you boil it down, they're looking at individual metrics, SLIs, for a particular time frame, it's typically the time frame of one of the continuous performance tests, maybe an hour, maybe a couple of hours. Then they compare the individual metrics either against the static threshold or also, and this is important, against the baseline from the previous builds. And then they're taking all the individual results and are kind of aggregating it up to what they call the performance signature, which in the end is a score that tells them are all the most important SLIs and SLOs green or not, or are some that are key and critical failing and therefore making up a very easy to digest overall score. Now the takeaways from all of this, I think the concept of SLIs and SLOs are obviously great. We see them being used in production. We see them being used for progressive delivery, for canary analysis, uh, but it's also great to see that performance engineers and automation engineers are using it for pre-production for quality gates. Now, I think where we need attention is that all of these implementations, they have a very tight definition of the SLO with the particular data source, which means it's very hard to switch from one tool to another. It also requires expert knowledge if you have to know all of these queries in order for you to define, let's say, a threshold on a response time. The main focus is also production. Uh, and most of these tools, you know, they, they either do one thing, but not the whole thing, production and pre-prod. But I think we need to think about pre-prod because this is where it's important too. This is where SLO should, st should start living. Now from the captain side, the open source project captain, we looked at all of this and we said, hey, we need to come up with a standard that supports all of this. So what we have, we have a separation of what and how. You can define, let's say, as an owner, a business analyst, whoever you are that defines your SLOs, you define your SLOs. Your error rate, JVM memory, number of database calls, conversion rate, and specify your criteria. Then whoever is responsible for getting that data 
from whatever tool you have. It might be Prometheus, it might be Dynatrace, it might be Datadog, New Relic, whatever data source you have. You then have maybe different people that specify the queries. This should be separated because the SLO should always be the same independent on how you get to this data. This is a nice separation of concerns on who is defining what. So whoever is responsible for SLOs, define your SLOs as code. Whoever is then able to define the SLIs, how you query this data, should focus on what they are good in. Now from a captain side, the way we've implemented it, you can ask captain, please do an SLO evaluation. Our so-called lighthouse service is then triggering the individual SLI providers through an event-based mechanism. These individual providers will then take the SLI YAML definition, query the respective API of that data source, push back the individual numbers, and then the Lighthouse is comparing it, the values, against your SLOs. Now, our approach to SLO is code. It has, it's all been documented. We have our spec. We're also working closely with other CNCF projects and open source projects to really drive this as a standard. This is just a quick overview of some of the things we've built in. I think what we try to do is really to cover both sides, the pre-prod and the prod use cases. This is why we have a comparison strategy where you can compare with previous results and not just, let's say, with static results that you're expecting or maybe with, one, uh, with a canary, with the main canary. What's also important though is the separation of SLIs and SLOs. So we have this, please join the conversation, give us feedback and uh, let's build a standard. And of course, it's not just the SLO and the SLI definition that we wanna standardize. We also wanna standardize the results. So on the left here, you can see that also the results that are produced are then you know, in a standard way, hopefully, or let's say that way, hopefully we can make it a standard. So that means you can extract this data and then visualize it in any way you like or process it in any way you like. We have a little visualization here in our, we call it the captain's bridge, whether this is the heat map visualization or the individual table visualization. So if you are interested in this, if you think, yes, we need SLO as code standards because we wanna truly bring this to the next level. We wanna separate SLIs and SLOs. We wanna support production and pre-production use cases. We wanna bring more people on board that are building data providers. We call them SLI providers. More to build analysis or visualization on top Then please join the conversation. Contribute to the spec, join our conversation on Slack, discuss with us at the community and follow us at the Captain Project. Thank you so much. And hopefully you enjoyed this and uh, check out some of the other recordings we've done. Bye-bye.